Let's review the new polling place procedures for election officials. Voting in Wisconsin will be a little different now that everyone is bringing their ID to the ballot. Voters will still be required to state their name and address out loud like always. But now, people must also show election officials an acceptable photo ID and sign the poll book. Voters have several forms of ID to choose from, including their Wisconsin driver license or state ID card, U.S. passport, a tribal ID or military or veterans ID, their certificate of naturalization, or a Wisconsin college student ID with proof of enrollment. They can even use receipts issued by the Division of Motor Vehicles. Just be sure the ID you see qualifies. It doesn't have to show the person's current address. Some IDs can even be expired, within limits. Check the expiration date on every ID to make sure it meets the requirements outlined in the Election Day Manual. Next, compare the name on the ID to the one in the poll book. They don't have to be exactly the same, but they should be close or conform, like Bob and Robert, or Sue instead of Susan. Then, take a look at the voter. Do they reasonably resemble their picture? Remember, things like hair color and weight can change, and beards and mustaches come and go. If a voter doesn't have an acceptable photo ID, give them a provisional ballot. For their vote to be counted, they'll have to come back with the right ID by 8 p.m. on Election Day, or provide the missing information to their municipal clerk's office by 4 p.m. on Friday after the election. If everything checks out, ask the voter to sign the poll book, right next to their pre-printed name and address. Their signature can be messy, even illegible. It may just be a mark. Since you do not compare their signature to the one on their photo ID, there's no need to worry. Just make sure every voter signs the poll book. It's now required by law, with one exception. Some voters won't be able to sign their name due to a physical disability. There are three different ways to handle this. Scenario 1. If the voter just registered at the polling place on Election Day, and another person signed the registration application due to the voter's disability, Election inspectors will need to write exempt in the space meant for the voter's signature. Then you give the voter a ballot. In the second scenario, the voter has already registered and both election inspectors agree that the voter is disabled. In this case, the election inspectors must write exempt by order of inspectors in the signature box before giving the voter a ballot. Finally, there's a third scenario for handling a voter who is unable to sign the poll book. If the election inspectors disagree on the voter's ability to sign, or both refuse to waive the signature requirement, the space meant for the voter's signature is left blank, and the word challenge is entered into the notes section of the poll book, along with the reason for your challenge. Then you follow the standard challenge process, including writing the voter's number on the ballot. Of course, you still give the voter their ballot so they can vote. That's it. Thanks to you, this Wisconsinite is ready to vote. Election officials can find more information about polling procedures and Wisconsin's new voter photo ID law at bringit.wisconsin.gov. Sponsored by the Wisconsin Elections Commission. Also find us online at elections.wi.gov. Thank you. Wisconsin.gov.